Teacher Briggs, people cannot understand my English. What is the problem? What do I need to do to improve my English speaking? Well, watch this video and find out. Hey there, I'm Teacher Briggs, and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because every week I post different kinds of English lessons to help you become a better and more confident English speaker. And if you have already done so, smash that like button. But here we go, guys. Why can't you understand no, why can't people understand your English? Now, there are a few reasons. I picked two important ones that will require a consistent um, work, you know, involving the problems that I'm going to mention. But there are other reasons, okay? I need to make this video objective. So if you want more information, always let me know because I check the comments and uh, the observations you guys make. So I appreciate that. But at this level, because here on my channel, I help specific students. I help pre-intermediate and intermediate students. And at this level, you have to put together all the information you learned as a basic student. You are reviewing information, learning extra information. And technically, the conversations are longer. You have to make more complicated phrases because you're at, at an intermediate level. So I can't just keep talking about your last weekend, about your house, describe your house, you know? I need to make you, I need to force you to use the lessons you learned as a basic student, now as a pre-intermediate, intermediate student, to focus on more complicated subjects. And that's, my friend, where the problems begin. It is a challenge. So, at this point, people will start to be confused by your English. Some people, not everybody. And that begs the question, begs the question, what's wrong? You know, I tried to have a conversation that was a little bit more difficult. People didn't understand my ideas. People didn't understand my opinion. What is wrong with me? And that's what we need to understand. First and foremost, as a basic student, you don't learn so much uh, sharing your opinion. Okay, because the questions are very objective. Yes, no, you learn a little bit of why and because, giving explanations, but it's hard to put all of them together, putting your thoughts, ideas together. And that's basically what a good course will make you do at this level, at a pre-intermediate, intermediate level. So the first thing that you're going to have to really work on, and the reason why so many students fall into this category, oh my God, people don't understand my English, it is the sentence order. And I will explain, I have videos here on my channel where I focus on grammar because this is grammar, okay? When you are at a beginning level, at a basic level, elementary level, you learned a lot of words, you learned a lot of verbs, you learn how to ask questions, you learn how to make negative phrases, but they were all very short phrases, very simple phrases, nothing wrong with that. Now at this level, you need more. You need to go back to simple present, simple past, future, Conditional, you will need to go back to a lot of, conditional is not so basic, but you will need to go back to basic explanations and focus on the sequence because every phrase has a sequence, even the long ones, okay? There is an explanation even to the long sentences and that is grammar. And to improve your speaking, you will need to go back to this by writing, reading, and listening. You will need these three supporting skills to help you organize your sentences. Because you know a lot of words. And one mistake that I identify in a lot of students at this level is they give words. But that's not conversation. Okay? And that's when students, that's when people in conversations are confused because you're giving me words. You're not giving me a sentence. And that's the danger here at this level. So you need to do solid work with your grammar, okay? Consistently, and you will need writing. I'm not just talking about book exercises, okay? With my students in my academy, I don't give book exercises. They have grammar. 
they have explanations. But I don't give them grammar exercises, like complete the phrase. No. When it's about grammar, sentence order, absolutely not. So here, you will have to make longer sentences. Your phrases will be more complicated. The subject is not just a pronoun, he, she, it. It's not that anymore. A very, you may have very long subjects. And that's when the complication starts because you are not able to identify the words in a phrase because they are more complex depending on the conversation you're having. And this is something that I do with my students. To challenge my students' speaking skills, they have a variety of conversation subjects. So the conversation subjects I give my students are more difficult, more challenging, but I also give the supporting work they need. So right at the beginning, early on in the modules inside the academy, they have review of sentence order and how they can get a little bit more complicated the more words you add. So it's not just about when you get to an intermediate level, even advanced, it's not just about putting words there. Well, they, they have a, a place for them to be in a sentence. And that's, that's the work you have to do consistently in your study routine. Because when it's time to speak, you don't have much time to think or to check your references or to check a website. You have to go. So the preparation is going to be your best friend here, okay? It is really important. So you will need to practice studying tense review, uh, tense order, sentences in English, how to make sentences in English, how to connect sentences in English. I think the next, uh, with these students in my program, they have a module about sentence order. The next module is about connecting sentences. Because this is what intermediate speakers, speakers need to do. Advanced, fluent, teachers, professionals, at any level, okay? Even as a beginner, you learn that, but in a very simplified way, okay? So this also happens when you are a pre-intermediate, intermediate student. Yes, it does, but it's much simpler as a basic student. Then it gets to get more complex. And what I see in pre-intermediate and intermediate students is they give me words. Oh, let me use this phrase over. But it's completely disconnected from the sentence organization. And then they don't connect the idea as well. Is but, the, the word but, B-U-B, B, B as in ball, U-T. Can you use but all the time? Well, depends. Sometimes what you need is adding not contrast. So you need to understand that there is a difference between contrast and adding, concluding, concluding. There are, okay? And there are different options. Oh, but I know how to use despite. Despite is to, to show contrast. I don't know. Well, do you know how to use it in a sentence? Do you know how to put it together next to a subject? How do you use it? That's or, that is grammar explanation and then organization. And this is what I like doing with my students. And that's why I don't give grammar exercises because I need to use what I study. So what they do to me and what I recommend you do when you're studying is, okay, I will use what I study. So I watch a lesson about sentences in English, in the present, in the future, passive voice, reported speech, present perfect continuous, past perfect. Okay, now I will force my brain. I will take the time. I'll find a piece of paper, a pen, and I will write. And I showed you some websites that can not perfectly, but can give you some corrections for the sentences you write. I use Grammarly all the time and it's not perfect. It's not 100% accurate, but it gives you a lot of direction. It gives you some feedback. So I recommend you use it. Okay. Now, what should you do? As I have been saying, you will review basic points and practice connecting ideas. What is a subject, an object, verbs, adverbs, connectors, conjunctions? How do I put them together to express myself? Not just words. Oh, I learned this very nice verb. Yeah. How do I put it in a sentence to make sense? Some verbs need objects. Some verbs don't. 
Sometimes a verb that e needs an object. Well, do I have to use a, an object every time I use this verb? I don't know. How about frequency? So all of these things will be really part of your journey as a pre-intermediate and intermediate student. So you absolutely must spend quite some time working on this. If people give this feedback to you, I'm not sure I understand. If they keep telling you that, it's your sentence order. It's disorganized. You know words, but you don't know how to put ideas together. And that is grammar, writing, reading, and listening. Oh, but I need to speak more. Yes, you do. But you need a foundation work that many methods don't give. Many traditional methods, and not as traditional to be very honest, many modern methods today don't like teaching grammar because grammar is boring. So I am a, 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 a big advocate, okay, of grammar lessons. In my channel here, if you check my channel, every week there is a grammar lesson. But I am not in favor of just doing grammar exercises. Personally, I like them, but they are not sufficient. They're not enough to help you improve. So this is something that you have to go back to. Okay, so you will need a combination of reviewing grammar sentences, basic grammar sentences, okay, tenses, excuse me, and sequence plus connecting ideas. Because as a pre intermediate, intermediate, advanced, this is also for advanced students, fluent people, okay, people who are teachers, we also need to do the work. As much as you guys have to sit down, uh, we have to do the same. Because the journey continues, the journey never ends. So you will constantly need to be um, watching out the lessons you study and paying attention to the process, okay? Now, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. This really helps me understand that this is a good lesson for you. So when you share, when you like, you're supporting my work, okay? And it helps me to be inspired to come back and do more lessons for you guys, okay? And if you're interested, I have some short programs that are available for sale. Check them out. They're very interesting and will support your journey to fluency, especially if you study alone, if you don't have a program like my academy, if you're not my BSA, my sardine. So I recommend it. Check the links in the description, but let's keep going. Pronunciation and intonation. This is the second one. Okay. Now, sometimes you do have good structure. You have good grammar and I believe you. Maybe you do. Okay. Maybe not perfect a hundred percent because nobody is not even myself. I know, but your pronunciation and intonation are not on point. And I'm not even here trying to say that, oh, so I need to speak as clearly as an American. No, as clearly as an Australian. No, that's not what I'm trying to say, because I know that depending on what your nationality is, your accent will be strong. It happens. Okay. It's natural. So people from Italy have strong accents. They do. They can improve. Every person from any country will be able to reduce their accent and improve being clear. It is possible for everyone. However, we also need to understand that depending on where you're from, you will be influenced by your native language intonation. It happens to all of us. Brazilian people also have accents, okay? We have a strong accent as well. I am Brazilian and I know that I don't speak English perfectly. However, I know that I am an awesome, extremely competent English teacher who helps the students from all over the world. I also study pronunciation and intonation consistently around the clock. So this will kill a conversation. Because if you're trying to talk and the person cannot understand the words you're saying, people will not try to continue the conversation for long, for, for very long. So you need to observe this. And one, one mistake that I, I identify in students is as a non-native speaker, we need 
to exaggerate the sounds a little more. We need to exaggerate the movement a little more. Because as we are no native speakers, we have a tendency to try to speak English by moving our mouths the same way we move our mouths when we are speaking our native language. And that's when it doesn't work. Because to speak English, you will need to make different movements. The exaggerations will be different. The intonation will be different. And this is something you need to fix. So, oh, but Priscilla, Americans don't open their mouth. Yeah, but we are not Americans. Oh, but Priscilla, British people speak like they have a sock in their mouth. Yeah, but I'm not British and neither are you. So we need to take that into account that I'm not, I cannot speak English by using the same movements that I use when I am speaking Portuguese. If I start speaking Portuguese right now, you will see that my movements will change. Why? Because it's another language. And some students are worried about moving their mouth and exaggerating the sounds. And he here and here we have even one more complication, which is to speak fast. Some people naturally speak faster than others. Okay? In their native language, some people speak fast. And if that's you, you need to monitor that. It's something I noticed to a lot of students from India. Indian people speak fast. Take it easy. Take a chill pill. You need to speak more slowly. Okay? In English, you need to open your mouth more. Okay? People from India. Okay? It's important. Uh, students from Arabic countries, you have some strong sounds in your language and you try to bring the same to English. Watch out. Okay? Some sounds. Watch out. So we bring those elements because we were born and raised in those environments. So we need to monitor that. People from Brazil, we tend to make the sounds a little longer, especially at the end of sentences. We do that. What are we going to do? So we need to work on that. So we move the mouth more. We speak more slowly. That's important. Breathe. Pause. Separate the words. I know the native speakers connect the sounds. But if you want people to understand your English, you need to practice speaking well the words and not trying desperately to connect the words because native speakers do that. Okay? Fluency is communication, not perfection. And I will always defend that. And if you need to speak more slowly to impress people, to make people understand you, then there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, okay? So that is a very important lesson. This pronunciation and intonation will need to be part of your journey. I have amazing videos here on my channel where I recommend pronunciation exercises, intonation exercises as a pre-intermediate regardless of your level. You will need to go back to basic sounds listening and practicing mouth movements, how to move your mouth, how to move your tongue, to learn basic sounds. Then you will learn in review, connecting the sounds, part of the journey. So we have the, the theory work, watching a lesson about a, a specific sound, repeating some words. We have a more intuitive work that is the shadowing work, which is to listen to a short audio file and repeat along, you know, go along and repeat aloud. This is more intuitive because you're not really uh, working on explanations, rules of sounds and connecting sounds, but they are both equally important. But a rule of thumb is speak more slowly, be more conscious of what you say, of the words that you're saying. Don't cut sounds. If you, if you haven't mastered that, I don't cut as many sounds. I do it, but not as much because I know that I, I, I'm, I'm improving my English speaking. I'm always working on my speaking, but I need to be a clear communicator that talks to anyone, anywhere, anytime. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend, hit the like button, 
But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.